in a previous video, we talked about uh, the fact that you can compute the, uh, the pitching moment at any location on an airfoil uh, by knowledge of the pitching moment at another location on that airfoil, um, as well as the normal and axial forces. So here's X and Y, and uh, and and usually we like to to uh, compute the pitching moment at the leading edge, or at least in, from an analysis perspective, it's it's nice to start from a known value at the leading edge. Uh, and so in coefficient form, uh, the pitching moment at any location is equal to the pitching moment at the origin, or the leading edge, uh, plus x over c times the normal coefficient, minus y over c times the axial coefficient. And uh, technically, I should put tildes above these. Uh, that tilde means a two-dimensional property uh, when we're talking about an airfoil. Now, we're going to find that that uh, much of this math extends to full aircraft, where we're interested in forces and moments just in the plane of symmetry of that aircraft. Um, uh, so anyway, but here we're just talking about a two-dimensional airfoil. And so uh, from this equation, I can compute the pitching moment coefficient at any location uh, in this x, y uh, plane if I know the pitching moment at the origin, which is the pitching moment about that point there, uh, and I know the normal force and the axial force. Okay, so, um, so let's talk about the aerodynamic center. The aerodynamic center is a very... A special location on this airfoil or, or in this XY plane uh, where the pitching moment is independent of angle of attack. So you can see that the pitching moment here uh, in general depends on the angle of attack. The, the normal force, for example, is going to change as a function of angle of attack. The axial force it will change as a function of angle of attack. And the, the pitching moment at the origin will change as a function of angle of attack. So in general, each of these three terms can change uh, or depend on angle of attack. And so in general, the pitching moment uh, depends on angle of attack. But, but there's a location uh, on, on this airfoil where the pitching moment is, uh, or, or the derivative of the pitching moment, the change in pitching moment with respect to alpha uh, is equal to zero. Okay, so that's the definition, uh, or excuse me, I should say the traditional uh, definition of the of the aerodynamic center is is uh, that it is the location where the change in pitching moment uh, uh, with respect to alpha is equal to zero. And, uh, and we say that that's the pitching moment about the aerodynamic center, okay? So this is the traditional definition. So, um, so we don't know right now uh, where that is on this particular airfoil, but we can uh, manipulate this equation here uh, in order to learn some things about it. So let's say that um, what we'd like to do is write this equation about the aerodynamic center. Now we don't know uh, uh, where that is, but I'll just uh, I'll just put a location on here. We'll call that the aerodynamic center. And, uh, and the x value is, um, uh, the x value is xac, and the y value is yac, and that's the the aerodynamic center on this airfoil. So the pitching moment about the aerodynamic center uh, is equal to the pitching moment at the origin plus uh, the x location of that aerodynamic center, so that's xac over c, times the normal force minus the y position of that aerodynamic center over c times the axial force. Okay, now, uh, one other thing that I'd like to do is uh, is I'd, I'd, I'd like to look at normal force in, in terms of lift and drag. So the normal force can be rewritten as CL times cosine alpha uh, minus CD times sine alpha. And, uh, and the axial force can be rewritten as CD cosine alpha uh, minus CL times sine alpha. Okay, so uh, let's actually plug these in uh, into this equation here. And what we'll get is that the, the pitching moment about the aerodynamic center is equal to CM naught, the pitching moment at the origin, plus XAC over C times CN. And, um, 
I'm going to plug in CL times cosine alpha uh, plus CD sine alpha. Uh, and then we've got a minus YAC over C times CA, which is CD cosine alpha uh, minus CL sine alpha. Okay, now for this traditional approximation, again, um, the next step is to look at which terms in this equation are large and which terms are small. And uh, so we can look at, at terms that are going to be added together. Uh, for example, these two terms here. Uh, if we, um, uh, let's see, if, the, uh, if we look at the lift coefficient times the cosine alpha, now alpha is usually small, and so cosine of alpha is very near one. So, uh, so this is the lift coefficient plus the drag, which drag is usually on the order of one-tenth of the lift coefficient. Usually uh, your lift is about 10 times that of drag. Uh, so, so drag here is, is an order of magnitude smaller than this, plus we're multiplying it by sine of alpha instead of cosine alpha. This cosine alpha is, is uh, close to one, sine of alpha is, is about alpha for small angles of attack. And so we have a very two two small terms here multiplied together, and and two larger terms here. When we compare those, uh, this this term is going to pale uh, in comparison to this term. And so uh, traditionally, what we do is we neglect then this term. Okay. Um, now we can look at uh, at uh, this this next uh, um, these next terms here. Uh, so what we've got is a, a y offset times uh, CD cosine alpha minus CL sine alpha. Now, now these two terms are, are, um, are maybe not quite as uh, evident uh, in, in, in how we can treat them because, uh, because drag is small, cosine alpha is large, uh, lift is large, but sine alpha is small. So let's look at, uh, if we were to divide these up and compare them to the, this whole term here, uh, because they're getting multiplied by yac over c. Um, what we'd find is that uh, now we're comparing things, so yac times the drag, uh, you know, both of these have a cosine alpha in them, so we're looking at yac times the drag uh, compared to xac times the lift. Now lift, again, is about 10 times greater than drag, and in usually x is, is a bit larger than y simply because airfoils are usually uh, rather thin. So, so we'd expect the y offset to be rather small uh, uh, simply because this airfoil is not very thick compared to its length here. So usually on the order of 8 to 10 percent of its length, okay? So here again we have a, a y value that's maybe on the order of 10 percent of, of, of x or, or what could be uh, for an x value and uh, and drag on the order of 10 percent of what lift could be. And so we're going to neglect this entire term as well, okay, and, and that's actually the the CD times the YAC there, uh, okay. And then the last term that we have here is um, is uh, CL times sine alpha and and YAC. So um, so we can compare this term multiplied by YAC to to this term times XAC, and the CLs are the same here, but here we've got a cosine alpha and a sine alpha. So this is much larger than this, and XAC is much larger than YAC. And so again, we have a YAC times sine alpha that's much smaller than XAC times cosine alpha, and so we can neglect this term here. So traditionally, uh, what we do is neglecting those three terms, we get that the pitching moment at the aerodynamic center is equal to the pitching moment at the origin uh, plus XAC over C, times uh, CL, and, uh, and finally, we make the assumption that uh, cosine alpha is small, or excuse me, the alpha is small, and so cosine alpha is very close to one. And so, so this is our, uh, this is a traditional approximation for the pitching moment at the aerodynamic center. Now, we still don't know where that aerodynamic center is. The way that we do that is we take the derivative of this equation. Uh, so, uh, so we take the derivative of the first term, so the change in CMAC with respect to alpha uh, is equal to, we're going to take the derivative of each of these terms um, with respect to alpha. 
um, plus XAC over C uh, times the derivative of CL uh, with respect to alpha. And uh, by definition, we know that the derivative of the pitching moment at the aerodynamic center with respect to alpha, which is this term there, is equal to zero. So, so that is the definition of our aerodynamic center right there. And so now we can solve for the x location of the aerodynamic center. Uh, and what we get here is xac over c uh, is equal to uh, negative uh, cm. And I'm going to just put a comma alpha there. That means the derivative of the pitching moment with respect to alpha divided by cl alpha, or the derivative of, of l with respect to alpha. And, uh, and by default, just from our... Uh, from our approximations up here, we've assumed that yac over c is equal to zero, that the aerodynamic center lies on the chord line. So this is the traditional approximation for the location of the aerodynamic center. So essentially what we'd need to know is uh, in order to estimate where that aerodynamic center is on this airfoil, uh, these are the only terms that we need to know. We need to know how the pitching moment at the origin uh, changes as a function of angle of attack. So we no need to know the first derivative of the pitching moment at the origin with respect to angle of attack. And we also need to know how the, ch how the lift changes with angle of attack. And, uh, and if, we, if we have both of those terms, then we can uh, just take the ratio of those, uh, the negative of the ratio of those, and that gives us an x location here along the chord line uh, where the estimate for the aerodynamic center is. And, and of course, from these approximations up here, we've neglected the, the y offset. And so, uh, so, that, so the, our aerodynamic center of necessity will lie on the chord line because we've neglected that y offset. So this is the traditional uh, approximation or method for finding the aerodynamic center uh, is this equation here. And, uh, and now we'll talk about a more general solution that is, uh, that is arguably more accurate and does not neglect the the y offset um, and also does not neglect some other terms that we've neglected here.